Hello everyone and welcome to a different kind of video. Today we're working in one of my favorite open source softwares, the one and only Blender. So what we're going to be doing today is a bit of knitting. Um, we're going to jump into geometry nodes and here's our default cube. We're going to head over to the modifiers tab and add geometry nodes. We're then going to click new and we have a new set of nodes over here. So the first thing we can do is break off this geometry because we're not going to need the input. Our cube disappears. So let's add something back in. We're going to add a curve line node. If we connect that up to our output, we can see there's a tiny little orange line over here. Now currently the line has a handle at the top and a handle at the bottom. That's not enough for sort of divisions. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some resolution to that. A resample curve like that. And we will pick some resolution. For now, let's just set it up to about 200 like so. So now there's sort of 200 invisible little points from one end to the other. Uh, the next thing we want is I think I'd like to work along the x-axis. Let's change the end of the line from one meter on the z-axis to one meter on the x-axis. And now we'd like to give this curve some shape. Curve to mesh, like that. So we're going to convert this curve to a mesh. And what that lets us do is pick a profile curve. So we'll create a curve circle, like that. And we'll drag the circle onto the profile curve. Radius is currently way too high. We'll set it down to maybe 0 0.01. That's just going to help us see our curve for the moment. So the next part of knitting is to make a sine wave. I'm going to grab these three nodes over here and just move them over to the right. Sample curve node like that. So what this does is let us retrieve some information from our curve still need the curve to connect to the output. So we've, we could basically retrieve the position, tangent, and normal of all of the positions along the curve. We also want to set the position of our curve. So we're going to bring in a node called set position. And that goes here. So we sort of put it on the way to the output. And we somehow want to take the existing position over here and convert it into a new position over here. So by default, if I make this connection between position and position, our curve disappears. We need at least one more input. Blender has this magical spline parameters node. This magically fetches the factor or distance along the length of the curve and fetches the position at that point and then puts it in the output. So we're basically finding the position of every point on the curve and setting it to itself so that this is a non-operation. But what that gives us is this little purple connection here. And in here, we can introduce all kinds of manipulations. So here we can go separate X, Y, Z, and then we can do a combine X, Y, Z and make the connection. And when we connect the X, the Y, and the Z, you can see that nothing has happened. So we still haven't done any work. This is very much like graphing in math class. We can take the X coordinate and go math sign and put that into the Y coordinate. And would you look at that? We have a part of a sine wave. If we want the sine wave to be more squiggly, we can introduce a math node in between like so and change that to multiply and then if we just multiply it a whole bunch we get our sine wave just as expected and just to recap why we did the uh, resample curve right at the beginning see what happens if I set it too low so these are the, the sort of points that we're manipulating so we're actually we're actually going to discard our position here i'm going to get rid of all these nodes because we could just set the position to whatever we want we, we don't need to look at the original position of the nodes at all what we're mostly interested in is this factor so we can set the position of the node based on the distance along the original node so we we can add in here for example a like this and we can plug that into Y like that. And now we've basically achieved the same thing as before. So we'll work this way because it tends to be cleaner. We're getting like a quarter or a third of a full sine wave here. And what we'd like to see is whole number units of sine wave. So I'm going to bring in our input here. And we're going to do a multiply. 
So we get rid of this. And we're going to take our factor and multiply it uh, with some value. Now, if I open this up, we're going to call this uh, stitch count, like so. Uh, and we're going to set that to be an integer. And then we're going to multiply it again. And what we're going to multiply it by is tau, which is 2 pi. And we're going to plug that into our y coordinate. And if we plug our x coordinate into x, uh, nothing happens. We need one more. We need sine. Now, if we plug that into our y coordinate and we increase our stitch count to one, we have one full sine wave uh, showing up. And if we increase our stitch count, we get two stitches on the length of our curve. But what would be good actually is if we were able to bend the original curve. So our original curve, we can see it if we add a viewer here. If I turn this on and off, you can see this is our original curve. And this is the shape that we've bent it into. And get rid of this viewer again. What if we wanted to change the original shape of our input curve and get some new distorted curve on the output? For that reason, we kind of don't want to set the position of this curve. What we'd prefer to do is set the offset. Now this kind of still works, but what we're getting here is not quite right. If we take a look at the viewer again, uh, we're actually distorting the length of our curve. It's kind of doubling in length, and that's no good. What we want to do is kind of re-express our transformation in terms of these things here, the tangent and the normal. So we're going to take the normal of our curve. We're not going to have combine x, y, z anymore. We're still going to take the factor and multiply it by the number of stitches. And then we're going to multiply that by tau, which is 2 pi. And we're going to take the sine of it. But then we're going to use that to scale the normal of the curve. So we want scale, vector math scale. And then we're going to bring that and stick it into the offset. There we go. Now we're back where we were. But now if we bent the original curve, we would find that this sine wave would be sort of distorted along the original bend of the, the input curve. Perhaps we should have a go at doing the same thing on the tangent, which is the direction along which the curve is traveling. So let's grab this. And I think we can just scale and we can plug that in there and then we want to do the offset by both of these right so we're going to have to add them together add plug this one into here and that one into there so now we get this weird kind of zigzaggy curve what it turns out that we want to do is we want to do this part over here with double the frequency so I'm just going to grab this, move it up here for a second. So we can achieve that by multiplying tau by 2, I think. So 2 times tau. There we go. So now we have this weird loopy shape. But I think we want the loops to go the other way. So let's make it negative 2 times tau. There we go. So now we've got this kind of S shape. Let me tidy up these nodes a little bit. Let's just do a little bit of simplifying. There's some nice stuff we can do here because these share some logic. So let's drag this out over here. And I'm going to introduce one in between. And that's going to be multiply by tau. And then we're going to drag that into here and just change this one to negative two. There we go. Then we can get rid of this. And this can just be positive one. We'll leave it there for clarity's sake. And we can drag it in there. Before we continue, I'd like a bit of control over the, the sort of scale of this distortion. Let's get ourselves a little bit of space and we're going to bring our group input and we're going to go in between here. We're going to have a multiply. This is going to go here to the output and we're going to have a multiplier here. So this multiplier here is going to control the sort of stitch. Let's call it the bulge, the stitch bulge. So I'm going to take this value, connect it here, and I'm going to go into the node group settings and change the name of this value to stitch bulge. We also want to be able to control our stitch height. So while I'm in here, I'm going to have the stitch height. And we need one more weird word that we're going to add in a second, which is sort of coming out of the XY plane. 
let's call it, we'll just go stitch Z because we're, we're also going to make it bulge in the Z direction. So I'll collapse this, I'll duplicate that, put it in here and put our stitch height there. Let's just adjust these. Here I'm changing the stitch height. Stitch bulge controls how much it bulges outwards. And of course, stitch Z doesn't do anything yet, but we'll, we'll change its value to 0 0.5. We've used the tangent and then we've used the normal. How do we get another vector which is perpendicular to both of these? That's where our friend, the cross product comes in. So we're gonna bring the tangent in and the normal in. We're gonna make one more copy of this bit here. We're going to bring in this multiply value from down here. Uh, I don't remember what this is going to be yet. Um, I think we'll just put it as positive one for now. Scale is going to come from stitch Z. And then we need to add another add node like this. We're going to add this, that, and that into there. Uh, we're missing the cross product coming in the top here. And we can reorder them over on the left here. There we go. Look at that. Minimum crossed wires. I like it. There is something very satisfying about rearranging these nodes. You'd think it would be an absolute nightmare. It is just so satisfying to rearrange the nodes. That's cromulent. It's got a little bit of movement in the Z direction. But currently it's at this weird sort of diagonal. I happen to know that we're going to need to change at least one of these into a cosine function. So let's try that to begin with. And there we're getting like this circle. So if we look at it from the top, that's the same shape as before. So let's now change this value to 2. Oh, there we go. Okay, stitch height thingy. What do we call it? Stitch Z. And we'll just make that a bit less extreme. That's the way I wanted it. While we're thinking about parameters, let's grab our group input. We're going to duplicate it and we're going to bring it over here. And we're going to parameterize our circle that we use to thicken the line right at the beginning. Let's just rename that to yarn radius. And then we're just going to crank that up a little bit. So now we've got a bit of thickness. So let's try increasing the stitch count now. So let's fix that by just going to the beginning. And I'm just going to manually increase this to be a bit longer and here you can see we need to increase our resolution otherwise things get a little bit choppy we've made a sort of error problem is that what we're editing here blender thinks that this is a mesh that's that little triangle symbol over there and if we press tab we can see the ghost of that cube that we've been ignoring now the problem is if i if i grab this and sort of move it around it's not going to affect our curve because we there's sort of no relationship. Uh, I can't delete the cube and then add a, a spline that I can manually edit. So we're going to have to abandon this object and create a new object. So I'm going to press tab again to exit edit mode. And I'm going to click add curve bezier. Now there's sort of two approaches we could go down. We can kind of move this network of nodes over onto this object or we can drag this Bezier curve in here and use this geometry. Either way, it should work just fine. I think in this case, I'm going to add the geometry nodes modifier to our Bezier curve. And from the drop down, we're going to select our existing geometry nodes. And we're just going to take this geometry and plug it into that. We have to change all of our uh, settings again. So we're going to increase our stitch count to five. We've got to increase the yarn radius. So now that our nodes are attached, we can jump into edit mode, grab one of the handles here on the end. We can squish and stretch and move things around in all dimensions. We can even grab the tilt tool and I can grab the end here and twist it around like that. So we can get some really complicated objects. And just to get a preview of what this is gonna look like, let's add another modifier to it. We'll go for the array modifier, maybe 0 0.3 looks reasonable. And then just increase the count a whole bunch. Okay, so here's where the real magic's gonna happen. So I'm gonna add a mesh and it's going to be a UV sphere. Let's just add geometry nodes. We're gonna create a new node setup. What we want to do is basically get all the horizontal edges from our sphere and convert those into curves. So we can do that by taking the dot product of the direction of the edge with the Z coordinate. And if it's zero, that means that it's perpendicular. So everything with a dot product of zero is an edge which lies on the X, Y plane. So we've got position one and position two of all the edges in the sphere. And 
subtract it doesn't matter which way around we're going to do this and then we do the dot product we can just manually enter um, z equals one over here so this is the dot product with the vertical vector so when this is equal to zero the result will be our selected edge to extract that from our geometry mesh to curve and that conveniently gives us this selection input before I go ahead and put all the stitching on there, let's just preview this with a quadrilateral. So we'll go quadrilateral curve, curve to mesh, like so. And we'll put the quadrilateral onto the profile curve and connect this up to the output. And we'll change this to 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. You can see we have all these horizontal curves and that's where we want to put our stitching. But there's a bit of a problem. See how all of the quadrilaterals are facing vertically? We kind of want them to be tilted so that they're sort of smooth with the surface of the sphere. What we want to do is to capture the normal and somehow store that information into the curve. We can do that with a store named attribute and we want to store it on the edge domain. We'll call this edge normal. Top left is the spreadsheet view. And if we look at edge, this is the edge domain we should see our attribute. Now, the reason we're not seeing it is because we're actually looking at the output over here. But if we drop in a little viewer, like so, we can now see this new attribute that we've attached to every edge using the store named attribute. What's nice about that is that it actually carries over through this operation where we convert the mesh to curve. If we have a look in control points, it's moved over here. So at this point is go set curve tilt. We need to do a little calculation using our stored attributes. Named attribute, it is a vector. The name is edge normal. We need to convert this vector into, probably want to do the dot product again and we'll dot product the normal with the z direction yet again. The dot product is also equal to the cosine of the angle. So we should be able to take the arc cosine and drop that into the tilt. And if everything has gone to plan, we should see that the tilt has lined up with the surface of the sphere. So what I'm thinking should be possible is we should just be able to add like another geometry nodes and literally just grab the first geometry nodes and then set our stitch count to like 10. Uh, oh, we're just going to go. It's looking very nice. It's been a little while. I've been doing battle with this node setup and I'm not friends with the sample node curve anymore. It has betrayed me. Although we're fetching the factor along the curve and that's all working properly, it's treating all of these individual curves the same. I didn't notice down here this little curve index input. So if I increase the curve index, it's actually fetching the properties from each one of those individual curves. Now, if you click all curves, like you would think would fix the problem, it actually treats all of these curves, not individually, but as one long curve. And the solution is that we don't need sample curve. We just need these two. We can bring these down here and connect them up. The tangent connects here and the normal connects here. And would you look at that? It's working. We have our knitted sphere. And if you've made it this far in the video, I really appreciate your view. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Obviously, things on the top of the sphere don't look all that great. But if you can avoid framing it in that sort of position, then it's pretty good. You can always use a different shape. Any shape that has edges which are parallel to the XY will work. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video.